pleasure to welcome and introduce our today's speaker. Mateus is an aerospace engineer by the Federal University of Santa Maria in Brazil, and he has worked at the National Institute for Space Research between the years 2015 and 2019 in Santa Maria. After that, he started to, uh, his internship at the Aeronautics Institute of Technology uh, in uh, San Jose dos Campos. And during this time, Mateo started uh, working with MBSC and has been doing it uh, for almost a year now. And nowadays, Mateus works at, as a researcher at the ITA Space Center while pursuing to get a master's degree at ITA. And without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mateus. So let me uh, make you a presenter. Matthews, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Stefan. Um, hello, and thank you all for joining us in this presentation. Thank you again, Stefan and Capella, for this opportunity. I'm Matthias Venturini, and I'll, I'll be presenting you an academic research case of a lunar lander mission model in Capella. This project was developed during my internship at the Aeronautics Institute of Technology, ITA, uh, on the last semester of 2019. This was my first time working properly with MBSC. I studied a bit in university, but I want to know more about it and learn a proper tool of model-based. Uh, that way, uh, with my advisor, Christopher, I started working with Capella and have been working every day since, as Stefan just mentioned. Here we have a summary of this presentation. I'll be sharing a background about it, as uh, about me, uh, Stefan just mentioned following by the information of Gartel project and Astrobotic, both main parts of this project. And after that, I'll be showing you my diagrams from Capella while explaining the idea of this project. Finally, we'll be having a lesson, lessons learned in a closure section and a Q&A to end it. I'll be uh, passing the, the part about, about myself as, as Stefan just introduced me. And here, talking a little bit about ITA. Uh, ITA is the origin of the Brazilian Aerospace Cluster in San Jose Campus, Sao Paulo. Here, a lot of known companies were created. For example, Embraer was developed here. The hangar from the bottom left picker picture uh, was the first Embraer hangar. Along with that, many researchers start their aeronautics and aerospace career here. It is also important to mention that ITA was constructed following the concept of MIT on the 1950s. In the beginning of this year, ITA Space Center was inaugurated. This is, where, this is where I work nowadays. Say, as how it is known, aims to capacitate, explore, and innovate in the areas of aerospace research. We have four main laboratories, as you can see here, SIGP, this is where we have contact with our stakeholders and clients. This is, where our, it's a, this is a concurrent engineer lab where the concept modeling is done, where our ideas and systems are first developed and passing through for the next one, the LSSA room. This is our simulation focused lab <clears throat> where we let, test some of our ideas developed on the last room. If needed, we go back and restart the concept modeling over and over until we reach the, the we fulfill the expectations of our uh, stakeholders. Following, we have the LSE. This, uh, this is where I work, where our mechanical radiation and system engineers are set, also our project managers. Uh, this is where our complex systems are being developed or using MBSC as a um, tool for, for the development. And finally, we have, we have the LSTA. This is where our computer, electric, and electronic engineers are set. Uh, this is where our software and hardware are developed and tested, as well as our electronic components. Here I'd say we have an approach using both OPM and Capella Arcadia. Uh, we use the OPM for our concept modeling when we are talking with our stakeholders and clients. And after that, after having our system or our concept decided, we go to Capella and follow the Arcadia methodology for our architecture modeling. 
Now talking about Gartea, which is the company related to the project that I'm presenting to you. Gartea aims to take Brazil to, into the moon in 2022. They have a lot of projects and research going on, and ITA is involved as a collaborator using their mission as a case of study, as is, is this case. Uh, and same as the deep, uh, build a deep space mission capabilities at ITA or develop a robust platform. They, uh, we here can a little bit more about Gratea. Their mission is to take Brazil beyond the final frontier, and their objective, and I quote, uh, we want to fund a science and technology institute and become reference in space initiatives, guaranteeing Brazilian participation in international space economic activities and promote, promoting science in general. That uh, follow, uh, with the, their vision to strengthen the, the mission and create a legacy for future generations is an amazing idea and is gl I'm glad to be part of, of this uh, development for, for Brazil research. For, um, from all, all of the projects, I chose to work with Cartea LS because it's, it's still on the concept level and it would, it would be a, a good way to, for me to learn uh, model basis engineer, learn Capella, and to use it on a, a real mission, a real space mission. And the objective for this mission is to transport an astrobiological payload that can be a, a culture of microorganisms to lunar orbit or surface and analyze its development over the time of the experiment. We have here the concept of operation from, for Galatea. The first, the payload will be developed and the, uh, it will be monitor the status of it during the flight all the way to the moon and on the orbit and surface of the moon. But to reach the moon, we need a, a vehicle, a transport. And for that, we are going to use Astrobot Astrobotics Peregrine. Astrobotic is an American company set to deliver payloads to the moon. The idea is to provide space access for countries and companies to develop the global scientific research. For that, they have Peregrine Lunar Lander, as you can see on the picture, to deliver the payload safely to the moon. They also have another vehicle called Griffin, but I don't have more details about it as it's not the focus of in this work. The concept of operation for, for Peregrine is to, going from left to, to, to right, is to receive the payload integrated with, with Peregrine, checking the integrity and checking if the requirements are, are all set, setting eventually the Peregrine to the launching vehicle that can be from a commercial company. After that, after Getting out of Earth as the atmosphere, Peregrine deallocates from the vehicle and travels to the moon by itself, as you can see in the second picture. Uh, after space and ob orbit maneuvers, Peregrine lands on the moon's surface safely, or it stays on, on, on the orbit if your scientific uh, research needs. In the right picture, you can see that there are lots of uh, sites that you, that the that you may choose for your mission. The first mission for Peregrine is set on the M1 Lux Martis. It's going to be on the year of 2021, next year. After that, you can customize your, your mission and check in any of the sites that they offer and the, also the orbit of the moon. Uh, here you have in the, the from, from, from Capella we have the capabilities for Peregrine from, from the vehicle. And the five main capabilities that it has to provide is to deliver the payloads to the moon and to the orbit of the moon, not on the surface, but also the orbit, and to provide utility support. And utility can be uh, divided in power system, uh, power supply, or maybe a communication uh, systems and so on. While integrating the payload, there is the other capability. It has to be able to keep the payload safe and safe from what? From a different temperature, from radiation uh, variation, also pressure and everything that they, the environmental conditions may affect your payload and the vehicle itself. Aside from the capabilities, Peregrine has formed a possible architectures that may be selected for your mission. 
The first two from the left focus only on orbit missions as they don't have landing support mechanisms. The following two may be selected when needed the landing maneuver. They differ by the amount of space for payloads and some components in on Peregrine. All this information from Peregrine was taken from Peregrine Payload User Guide from the Astrobotics website. It's an open uh, document. So any doubts and questions about the price and different architectures you may find there, as I do not own this information. Finally, in the right picture, you can see the standard payload uh, mounting where the payload may be attached and transported, as you may see the, the orthogrids highlighted on the picture. You are able to ask uh, Astrobot for different size and locations for your payload, as they also mentioned in the user guide. It, you are able to customize your, your mission as you may, as you want, but it has a, a additional costs and some limits that you have to, to follow as requirement. Now we are going to, to see uh, the diagrams of Capella. And I'm going to open Capella in a, another, another, another window. And the idea of the, the, this project was to model Gartea LS, a mission and peregrine lunar lander following the steps of Arcadia, Arcadia methodology. That way, until the system announces the, the next layer, the system, in this case being peregrine, is not mentioned in the diagrams of this, this layer. In the operational analysis, we are focusing on defining what the users of the system need to accomplish. That way, we need to identify them, their roles, and activities. Uh, so, I, I'm going to show the users of this uh, system that, that I, I built. And the four main entities and actors that we have here is Astrobotics, the launching system, the launcher, Cartea uh, scientists, and the environmental systems. Uh, I want to, to highlight that the environmental system acts like, like an entity or, or an actor to the system, because while providing the environmental conditions here, it is influencing in the other capabilities that it's keeping the payload safe, as the temperature, the pressure, the radiation can affect us and maybe even uh, destroy some of your, your data. Astrobotics is responsible by managing the payload on the moon and on Earth while collecting and sending, sending data. This data that is sent is going to be analyzed by the Caratea uh, scientists and depart from traveling to the, to the moon is both responsible by the launching to get out of the Earth's atmosphere and to Astrobotics to, after that, going to travel beyond the space. With this diagram, we can open to a more detailed one for the functions for each of our, our actors and entities. We have here uh, how uh, some top level functions, uh, they don't, don't, they are not very well detailed at this time because we don't, we just want to see what each of these actors are, are going to do. And after that, we are going to start to detail each function. If you know a little bit of Capella, you'll notice that any of these functions is open except for keep, keep payload safe that has a, another diagram uh, inside it. And now I can open and show you what I, I was trying to do to say about keeping the payload safe. The outcome of this function is the payload conditions at, at the center. And the condition that it, uh, it's providing is the protection against electromagnetic interference, the control of payload temperature, the protection against mechanical loads and radiation, as well as pressure and humidity. That, that, that way, every time the, the environmental conditions are being provided. If I, uh, sorry, if I highlight the interactions, you can see here how the information is being exchanged between the, the entities of our system. In this case, it, it will, the outcome and the, the income and the outcome of, of these our functions ended in the same uh, place that it started. It's not necessary this way every time, it's just a coincidence. 
but you can see that uh, it starts by developing the payload until the, the time that we can analyze the data after, after, after a while. With that, we can see uh, another way to, to see the same diagram that I, I just showed is to see the, the scenarios that we can see how chrono, uh, in a chronological way uh, how the information is being passed. Uh, seeing the, the example of traveling to the moon, just get, getting the part of traveling to the moon, we see the astrobotics is integrating uh, the payload on Peregrine. After that, they are setting the Peregrine on the delivery system. Once the, the Peregrine is set on the, the launcher, we launch the delivery system to the moon, in this case to the out of, of atmosphere, and separate Peregrine from, from the launch system. Uh, at the time the program is deallocated, we have it landing on the, the moon afterwards. If you see here, it's a really simple diagram. You don't have too much details yet, but this uh, diagram is going to be more and more detailed as we move further in this work. It's important to highlight that during all the, the time, we are having to keep the payload safe against all those problems that I, I mentioned before. Following in the system analysis, here we start seeing our, our system as a black box, and we define what system has to accomplish for the users. We don't define our, our system completely here, but just identify its boundaries and high-level functions. For that, the capabilities that I have on the operation analysis, they are now divided in, in missions and capabilities of these missions. So we have here, for, for example, provide protection that is divided on all sorts of types of protections. We have the provide support that I mentioned before, that is like power supply, provide data services, or maybe provide communication services. And all the, the capabilities are linked with what, which one of, of our actors are responsible for them. If you see in the handle data mission, it divides and collect, send, and analyze data. And we have a, a note here saying that collect and send data, we could, we could see them inside of the communication services. I just divide them here uh, and separate just to show that these two functions are part from Garatea and while, while providing the communication services are responsible by the astrobotic actor. And same is part of the traveling the moon. You can see all the types of capabilities that we have for our system. With that, we have uh, some high level and top level requirements, uh, functions, sorry, no, not requirements, that I decided to, to open this way. And I will show you uh, why. Uh, I, when I was doing this, this work, I, I saw that each layer that we are going to, to pass, more and more functions were going to be uh, created for getting more detail, more uh, sophisticated diagrams. So what I decided to do was to give, give a top level function and this top level function is divided in all those minor sub functions of this type. So the first diagram of the architecture, we have all of our um, actors and entities, the same that, that we had before, Astrobotic, Gartea, Environmental System, and Launcher, but now we have our system uh, being part of the diagram. It's just an idea of a system, as, as uh, I said before, is a black box system, and all of them has, have their own top-level functions. Seeing now the, the system, we have the provide power supply, provide data and communication services, provide security, prepare travel and land on the moon. This is the top level functions. And these four uh, top level functions can be divided into those minor functions. And they are in the same space so that they don't, we don't have the, to look for them again in another diagram. If you saw, if you jump from one diagram to another, they are set on the same space as the top level functions. Here we have all the, the uh, information being passes pass it through the actors and the system and how this information is getting uh, to another another place. 
We can, in Capella, use functional chains, there are these color lines that you can see in this diagram, to, uh, to highlight one path, one path that one, we want to, to show in a diagram. In this case, looking in the blue line here, we have the Peregrine landing maneuver and how the landing maneuver works on this diagram. Starting from the, the launcher, uh, launching the vehicle to Earth orbit, we start preparing the, the allocation maneuver from the Peregrine system. As we separate Peregrine from the vehicle, we can start properly the travel to the moon. Realizing the space maneuvers and orbit maneuvers, Peregrine can start the landing maneuver on, on the moon. With that, we have to provide the support for landing and safely we can land the Peregrine on the moon. The same can be seen on the other functional chain, that is the data handling. And all the, the other functions are highlighted here. Looking for, for the same diagram that I, I mentioned before, the, that blue line can be uh, passed here for the, sorry, not this, for the scenario for seeing the chrono chronological way of the, the landing maneuver. So the same thing that I, I show you on, on the first diagram now has even more functions on the way it, it will work to land the program on the moon. And you will see in the following layers that more and more components and more and more functions are going to be added and given this, this specifically a scenario, a more detailed view. We have here the, also uh, these functions as I, I show you. And uh, if you want to see a little bit more, this uh, the model will be uh, shared with you. You can ask for me for an email uh, at the time. But you can see here that we have all the, the functional exchanges happening in different diagrams besides the, this main one. Moving further to the logical architecture, here we, we see our system as a white box. Also, we may divide our system in subsystems and components, and each one of them will have their own functions and, and own activities. This is the layer where we define how the system will work to fulfill the expectations of our stakeholders, for example. Uh, this way, I I divided our Peregrine Lunar Lander in, in their own subsystems. For example, here we have the electrical, the communication, the guidance, navigation, navigation and control, structure and mechanisms, thermal, command and data handling, and propulsion subsystem. And each one of them have, have their own components and sometimes even subcomponents. One thing that I want to mention before showing the architecture diagram is the amount of uh, functions that are created as we go through the next layers. As, I, as you can see here, all color uh, in gray are added functions on the logic architecture coming from the system analysis. So these uh, functions are either added because they were not yet on the, the level of a system analysis or, or they were too detailed for the level or some of the, the function that we had before had to be uh, enhanced in another function, in sub function. So we have all those in gray here. You see that a lot of new functions are added every time that we go through a layer. Here is an example of a, a total new function being created because if we didn't think about propulsion operations on the system analysis as a black box. Now that we have a propulsion subsystem, we can think about propulsion operations itself. That way, having the subsystems and having the, the, the system function, we can have two diagrams about our following the same architecture as before. The actors and entities uh, around didn't change, but our our system is now divided in their own components and we have how they, their, these components talk to each other, how they exchange information and how the, the entities 
besides talk with some of these uh, subsystems too. Following to the idea of seeing how that each of these components, each of these subsystems have their own function. We have here all the functions set for, for this, for the Perlin Lunar Lander. And you'll notice now that we don't have those functional exchanges anymore showing on the screen, because as we have a lot of uh, functions, a lot of components, it will be a little bit messy and hard to see if I, I let all those arrows and pointy things uh, uh, appearing on the screen. So I, I, what I did was just to show how the, the information is set for each of the, the functions. So given an example, the propulsion system is divided now in main engines, the attitude control system engines, propellant, propellant tanks, and pressure gas tanks, and each one of them have their own functions. If you want to know more details about the how the functions are, are exchanging information, some some diagrams here that show how the information is set. So there's these arrows and 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 in color the things that are not in the other diagrams uh, difficulty our view. Uh, looking again on the landing pairing on the moon. Uh, before we had two to three actors acting on the the landing program on the moon. Now we have now that we have the components of each uh, subsystem. Now we can say what component is doing what function to properly land program on the moon. So now we have the same chronological way from top to bottom, uh, uh, seeing how our rate gy uh, gy gyros and how our antennas are are getting information, so that we can eventually land our pairing on the moon. Finally, on the physical architecture, we add the physical components present on our system. That way we have how the our system will de be developed and built once we are not in the, the digital way. This is how the, the, the physical uh, Systems shall be built after we we finish Capella, for example. How what companies we are going to buy? What uh, how the system will will be? And for that, as you, you may have noticed, uh, the more we, we are going to uh, in inner layers, the architecture diagrams are getting bigger and bigger, and even uh, and harder to to be able to see, to show you uh, in a, a way to easy to understand. So what I decided to do, instead of using this, the same diagram with all the actors and all the these subsystems, I decided in a way to divide them in their own uh, diagrams. So looking just for the command and data handling subsystem, we have how Inside of it, it exchanges information, and with who it exchanges information. In this case, with Gartea scientists. And this is, is more a, a personal preference than a correct or a wrong way to, to do. It's just to have a, a, a better way to show other people the diagrams. And one thing that you will notice on the in all diagrams that the command and data handling subsystem is present in all of them, because this is the core of our subsystem. So every information is going to pass through the command and data handling, and then the commands will be shot from them. Uh, here in the electric power system, we can see that uh, we have some notes on the diagrams that some some things that we can cannot uh, add on Capella, or some things that I, I found on the payload user guide when I was I was checking, that say how the the operations are going to to work. For example, how the the battery are going to, is going to work during the orbit maneuvers and and during the 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 launching. But we can also see, for example, the thermal system how it's worked for. for for distributing heat out of the the peregrine and inside of it to uh, heat your components if you need it, and how it irradiate uh, your heat also. 
and again it passes through the command and data healing sub, uh, subsystem. Now going going back for our our closing uh, panel, uh, just some lessons learned that I I had during the project and some that I have now uh, almost a year after uh, this project. Regarding the realization of the project, I I feel glad that I could uh, study and applicate the model based system engineer in online space mission. Uh, it was the, uh, as I mentioned, the first time I was working with it. Uh, so most of the time I was trying to 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 learn by myself, and and the other time I was having uh, left my advisor. So it was pretty easy for me to understand in a couple months how to use Capella and how to operate in it. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that I, I would change it uh, from the documents that I show you because of what I learned in the, the present moment. I'm glad to participate on the Brazilian Space Ambition project. It's really, uh, it's really nice. Uh, and this was both personal and pro professional development for sure. And as I was mentioned, after finishing the project and, and now that I, I work with Capella every single day, I learned new features from Capella that I could use it for enhance my, my diagrams to make it uh, better to visualize or maybe some different uh, functions from Capella that I could use for, for express my idea in a better way. I could use, uh, could use the add-ons, for example, the requirements, the system to subsystem transition, the PVMT uh, add-on also. And they all focus on enhancing your ability on Capella and to show others the, the, your work. As uh, not everybody is, is know about MPSC, sometimes you are going to show your work for for your stakeholders, your clients that don't know the, the tool, but you have to be able to present them and pass on your ideas for them. And one thing that you may have noticed uh, from the first diagrams that I show you to the last ones, uh, the understanding on how to assemble the models and diagrams more clearly. Uh, I mentioned a lot that I, I disabled the, the functional exchanges from the diagrams, because I, I didn't want to be a, a messy diagram, a, a hard way to see, as I want to express what the diagrams are talking. You, you, can, you can have many other diagrams that show little parts of your whole system that you don't have to put in a single one. With that, um, if you want to know more about Astrobotic and see where I took the information and want to know more uh, more about the costs of the the missions and customized operations you can see on their website. Garatea, unfortunately, their website is unavailable at the moment. They are in maintenance, but I'm looking forward to the, them coming back so I can probably uh, upload the, the models from Capella in both the Garatea uh, website and the ITA Space Center website too. So. At the moment, I'll be sharing the, the models with you by email. So if you want, please, you can contact me anytime you, you want. Thank you all for, for coming again. Thank you, Stefan and Capella. I was also would like to thank Astrobotic for letting this information open to public. And thank you, Lucas Fonseca from Garatea for letting me present a little bit of this amazing work and, and be part of the development of Brazilian space research. We are going to open for questions in the following minutes. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mateus. Um, yeah, as you said, we're going to switch to the, the Q&A questions. So just as a reminder, you've got um, a Q&A session window uh, and you can uh, ask your, your question there. So we already have a few questions for you, Mateus. Um, the first one is, are the components presented physical or logical or both? Uh, both, depending on the layer that you are. If you are in the logical uh, architecture, you're just uh, showing what 
the idea of the component will be. And when, when you're going to the physical uh, architecture, you can say what the component is. If it is a solar panel, what type of solar panel you're putting on the turbine, for example. Okay, next question is, um, how did you model allocation of resource budgets like mass, power, and volume? Okay, so this is not uh, something that I, I know much about Capella, and I'm not sure if you can add this on, on the diagrams. I believe, if, if so, not in the, the normal version, but some add-ons that can be added so that you can put mass, volume, and other characteristics of your first system there. Yes, to maybe to complete your, your answer, um, you, you can uh, model it by using the uh, PVMT add-on. So PVMT stands for uh, Property uh, Values Management Tools. And, and with this, you can very easily uh, add, uh, I would say, uh, non-functional information on, on any uh, Capella element. So could be mass, power. Um, there are other ways to extend Capella as well. Uh, you can develop uh, viewpoints and, and uh, uh, you've got some example of viewpoints uh, on the Capella website. And I think um, there is a mass viewpoint and probably a cost viewpoint as well uh, that are provided as example. So, so this is uh, yeah, a couple of ways uh, that you, you could do it basically. Um, Next question is, did you manage and compare uh, design variants? Sorry, can, can you repeat? Yeah, did you manage and compare design variants? So that's that's about viability and product lines. Oh, no, I, I didn't do this on the on the project. OK, um, again, maybe as a, a, a complement to, to this question. Um, the uh, Pure System uh, company is providing a, a Capella add-on uh, uh, that is called uh, Pure Variance. And, and with this, you could um, uh, basically uh, design variance uh, with, with Capella. Um, next, next question for you, Mateus, is um, do you think that uh, the Capella sequence diagram are better than the system and activity diagrams for describing the actions done by each component? I think it depends a lot of what you are trying to, to show. Uh, in a chronological way, the scenarios are, are better. You have for sure what is happening at each time. You can even uh, put durations for each of the, your, your functions uh, and your component exchange. But the functional chains that I, I show you on, on the diagrams, they, they give you an idea of the whole diagram, which parts of the, the system and which parts of the actors are working on that specifically uh, activity, for example. Okay, uh, the next question is, um, um, do you think that your diagrams might be effectively used in asteroid landing missions? And uh, is it possible to integrate these diagrams to C++ Java classes? <clears throat> so, and, and is it possible to develop parametric diagrams? So quite a few questions there. Yeah, okay. Uh, the first one about uh, being used on the, the mission itself, probably. Uh, as I mentioned uh, on the lessons learned, I, if they were going to be used, I, I would probably change, it, change them quite a bit. I, I let them as I, I did it uh, last year to show the improvement that I had during the, the time. So it was more than a, a way to show you then how it would be to send it, for example, to Garatea for, uh, as my stakeholder. So they could for, for sure be, be used for, for the mission about, uh, the JavaScript and C++, I'm not sure uh, if Stefan knows if there's a, a possibility to, to transist, transist them directly for the program language, I, I cannot answer. Yeah, so on, on, on using the diagrams to C++ and Java classes, um, 
I would answer, answer it in two ways. Uh, first of all, from a technical viewpoint, it's possible to generate a code or text from Capella. Uh, you can do it, for instance, using the um, uh, Axelio open source uh, code generation technology. Um, um, and then the, the second answer to this is that the, the, the model that you did is probably a, a too high level model to generate code from. Uh, but, but, but then if you maybe go down to, to um, lower detail, uh, you, you, you may use uh, these models to generate code, I guess. Um, so the next question, I, I uh, you, you, I think you partially answered it, but I'm, I'm going to ask it in case you want add anything. It's uh, what are the expected uses uh, of the model for the project? Well, uh, adding to what I mentioned before, the idea of how you, the, the mission is going to, to be performed, you'll, you'll be able to know uh, at which time your, your, your payload must be, for example, in sleep mode, in transit mode, and active, you know this, so uh, you'll be able to, to to set all your configurations for your payload if you, if you need it. You know which of uh, the your payload functions are going to be used during the phases of your your scientific research, and you have to be able to integrated with Peregrine in the proper way following the, the requirements from the user guide. So there you can add the requirements, as I, I mentioned, that they are not in the diagrams at the moment, but you could, could add them there and show that what functions or what uh, components of your, your payload, you, we, we could use it even uh, another diagrams and, and enhance these diagrams to to put the payload also as part of the those diagrams, so we can we can add the payload and the the pairing the same diagrams that we can show. We can see how the communication between them are happening, and in this way you can we can see we can put the requirements for these communications and see that if they are working they are view working properly when built, of it, or if there is something that we need to change before building it in the physical way. It's a lot less money that you are uh, putting in the, the, in the research. You, you're spending your time in thinking in modeling and not uh, spending your money in a component that did something wrong. Okay, next question, which is a, a completely different one. Um, did you think about naming your logical components as behavior uh, instead of physical things, which which you have done. Well, I could I could actually name them just for their behavior. It was more than a, a preference as a, as I was following the following the the user guide that I just use the same names that they they use there just so for for me to be able to follow in an easier way. Um, next question is, uh, do you plan to model also a supporting system? I, I do not intend to, but if the, the project uh, goes forward and I, I can work on it again, I probably would. Okay. Um, have you established a review process? What, what do you mean by the review process? I guess a process to, I mean, that's my, my understanding of the question, but I guess a process to review your models, you know, make sure that uh, review the models with um, your stakeholders. Uh, yeah. Um, make sure they are right okay, okay. and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so the first uh, thing that I was using to review and, and compare was the, the user guide. So every every information that was there was checking if I was putting correctly on the on the diagrams. If I if some information were not there and I had to create them, I didn't have the option to talk directly to to 
astrobotic to have sure. But as this was more than a, more a, an academic research than a, a proper uh, vision itself, it, there was no problem. But if you have the, your stakeholder and you're doing this, uh, these diagrams and this, this modeling, you have to be able to be in contact with them and show what you, you, you did. Uh, if this fulfills their expectations, if this fulfills their, their, their problem, and if so, if, if, if it, it's good, okay, you can continue. If not, if not, you have to be able to explain why you did it, how you did it, or try to understand even, uh, uh, even better what they are trying to pass to you so that you can uh, model it in Capella or other, other system engineering too. Next question is, uh, you, you mentioned the use of uh, OPM for concept modeling. Uh, does Capella has capabilities to do OPM modeling or are they separate tools? They are separate tools. They are even from different uh, companies. We use uh, OPM for getting uh, this uh, closer uh, contact with the stakeholders and, and uh, our clients as it's uh, Easier to even even easier to to model uh, too, but it, when you need for the architecture part, uh, OPM is not uh, I would say good enough. It's not uh, enough for your architecture modeling. So Capella is way better for for that part. But when you need to model something, uh, just the concept design of, of something, and you want to show it to your stakeholder and talk with them, it's uh, quicker to do it in OPM. Okay, um, next question is, uh, do you model anything on the dynamics of the system? You can give an idea of the, the dynamics of the system, but I'm not sure if you can put everything uh, in, in Capella. Okay. Um, Okay, next question is, I'm going to answer it, is, uh, the question is, is, is Capella uh, an open source software? So the answer is yes, it's an open source software. Uh, it's hosted under the Eclipse Foundation, uh, so you can basically download it and, and use it. Um, did you simulate the sequence diagrams, especially at the subsystem levels? I did not simulate them, I just did the, the diagrams. I, uh... As, as this was part of my internship, I was getting a little bit, uh, I was getting on the, my timeline, so I, I didn't uh, simulate anything. It was just the, the modeling study. Okay, uh, did you perform any quality assessment to check the quality of your model-based requirements? Um, beyond, the, beyond the comparison and and checking no 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 quality ensures in and analysis um did you prepare behavior models for the high level subsystems for peregrine or payload no uh the only things that i i model are are here in the, the presentation in the model that you may acquire after Okay, did you connect text requirements to the model? This one, no, but I, as I was mentioned, I, I would uh, nowadays add the text requirements for, for, the, for the model. I would add them on the diagrams that, so that we can, could see what requirements are, are expected for those functions, those components, those exchanges. So at the moment, this is not uh, added any requirements on the diagrams. Um, in retrospect, would you take another route to learn Capella and develop your model, meaning ad advice for those who are starting? I think for learning, I wouldn't. I, I use both uh, Arcadia books, I'm not sure the, the name of them uh, at the moment, but uh, they both show the the theory, the methodology of Arcadia, and examples on Capella uh, on how to, to perform the, the 
your functions, your, your diagrams there. So, and, uh, and at it, we have now a postgraduate uh, course that we could can, uh, that is providing, provided by my advisor, Christopher, that we, he teaches how to use Capella and how to, to enhance your functionality in Capella and also in OPM. So, if you have the opportunity to make a, a post graduation course at ITA, uh, try to do the, this this subject. If you if you are following the uh, model based engineer uh, career, and if so, uh, there's a lot of webinars from from Capella beyond uh, beyond this that shows uh, different functions from Capella. Different tools, different add-ons. Some of them are commercial. Some of them are free to use. Also, like Capella. So, I think this is this is a good idea is to follow the the methodology methodology Arcadia methodology books and the example ones. If you if you can look for for courses, Capella has has a lot of Capella days and events that, that they they do showing the, their work, showing and teaching uh, people on how to use the, the, the tool. And if you are resident in Brazil and, and are looking forward to a master or doctorate, you can try it time and there's a, a subject specific for that. Okay. Um... How did you evaluate various architectures in, in consideration? The architecture in comparison to, to what? I would say um, uh, you may have a different architecture, uh, I mean, possible architecture as a solution for your system. So I guess the question is how did you evaluate the various architecture that you could have designed. Ah, okay. Uh, as this was uh, a training exercise on how to, to learn, I was, I was, I haven't many ideas on how to, on different architectures on how to build the, the Peregrin, for example, the system, but you could either open different projects and work on them uh, simultaneously. And see how uh, which one of them are going to follow your ideas and fulfill your expectations the best. So you you mentioned also Stefan another tool. I, I, I think it's not PMDT that you can see different architectures at the same moment. Uh, yes, the the. Um... There are ways to uh, model different um, uh, architecture, different solutions uh, in, in Capella. And, and then the question is also, uh, I guess, the evaluation of this architecture. So you can also evaluate uh, the, the quality of the architecture with Capella, building some uh, uh, viewpoints that enables to, uh, you to, um, to evaluate the quality uh, based on different cr criteria, basically. Um, next, next question is, what about traceability matrices between operational processes and components or between requirements and processes and components? Okay, so uh, some of those you, you could use uh, external tools to, to do it, but uh, one thing that Capella helps you on the traceability of everything that you do uh, if you change something in uh, a diagram, for example, the architectural ones that I, I show, show you, uh, if you change the, the functional from, from one component to the other, all of the, uh, all of the other uh, diagrams that uh, follow this the same layer are going to be changed as well. So you have to, you know, you know that if you're changing one diagram, you, you don't need to change the others. Uh, Traceability, there, there are some matrix of traceability in Capella. In the, the, you can use them to, to see when you transit, when you, you transit from one layer to another, you can make a, a, a matrix to show you how, which new functions you, you, you did it. 
and with with which of the other functions they are related or how your your actors are related to them or component or your capabilities are, are related so there is some uh, tools to to see the traceability you have this automated uh, automated changing in your in your diagram when you change one you change the the other ones it, it doesn't work for different layers just in your on the the current layer that you are and you can have some uh, external tools also to to help you out you don't it, you don't need only capella for a, a big project like, like this you could, you could use and you should use other uh tools not only for model based engineer but for the other areas of of the engineering for example Okay, I've got uh, one uh, last question, which I'm going to answer, which is, does Capella support uh, behavior model simulation? Um, so, so the answer to this question is right now uh, no, uh, but I know there are a few organizations uh, working on this topic, so uh, I expect that this may be something uh, supported uh, in the near future. And um, I think we are uh, uh, we are done with the question. Can you could you go to the next slide, uh, Matthäus? Uh, yeah, so thank you, Matthäus, for, for, for a great talk and uh, uh, thank you for the audience uh, to, to, for the questions and, and, and for your time. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, quite a few webinars in the last uh, weeks or months, uh, but uh, we we'll make a pause uh, with the webinars during the summer and uh, we'll certainly come back in uh, September. I also wanted to share with you that the uh, Capella Days conference uh, is scheduled to happen between the 12th of October and the 15th of October 2020, and it will be a, a, an online conference uh, this year for the first time. So it is going to be easy for anybody to, to join. So please save the dates uh, as it will run for four days uh, with uh, three talks per day. And we are going to have some uh, amazing presentation, including uh, uh, some Capella case studies from uh, various domains uh, with companies like uh, uh, GMV, uh, Virgin Hyperloop One, Siemens, uh, Vitesco, or Next Rail, uh, for instance. Uh, next slide, please, Matthäus. So another thing I uh, wanted to share with you today is that we put online a new web page on the Capella website featuring the uh, organizations uh, using Capella. We have already more than 25 organizations who have accepted to have their logo displayed here. So if you are a Capella user, uh, please consider having uh, your logo added to this page, uh, displaying uh, organization that, uh, displaying these organizations that use Capella is really helping us to develop the uh, Capella adoption worldwide. So the instructions uh, on how to, to do this are available at the bottom of this uh, web page, or you can uh, basically contact me. And finally, when you'll be leaving this webinar, uh, we would be grateful if you can uh, give us some feedback about today's uh, uh, webinar by filling out the satisfaction form. And please do not hesitate to contact us uh, if you have any question. So thank you again and goodbye. <laughs>